paintings, sculptures, installations. The eye-catching work of artist Marcus Linenbrink is all about color. I like my work to be like readable or enjoyable or like, like, like approachable to basically anybody that has a good feeling of color or, you know, because color trigger all of us as human beings, you know, and that's my, that's the point where I catch the audience, you know. Marcus Linenbrink's work is the inaugural exhibition of the Museum of New Art, or MONA as it's called, located at 135 Congress Street in downtown Portsmouth on the ground floor of Jimmy's Jazz and Blues Club. Seeing the space like kind of evolving, the first time I was here, I was like, yeah, this is a pretty big space. We can do something very special here. And that's kind of what you also want for the museum. You want the first show to be, in a way, special, bring something that people remember when it's gone, in a way, you know. Marcus lives in New York City, but was born in Germany, where he attended art school. He knew at age 15, he wanted to be an artist. This idea formed in my head, but it's like, it's a very naive and romantic idea that you have as a teenager. Marcus saw the gallery space while the building was under construction. This vibrantly painted room wasn't even built yet. It was an open construction site. But Marcus turned it into a canvas. When we talked about this show, I was like, yeah, I want to do a room, like a full room painting, like where everything is painted, because it's like this overall experience. It's so something so special. So that's what you kind of want for the first show in the museum. You want something where people talk about. So I basically mix like five, six, seven colors. It's almost like a chord when you talk about music, you know, one chord has different tones that come together and create something that's bigger than the single notes of it. Like if you look from here to here, you know, you have a certain melody like in a tone, you know, and then if you move from here to here, it totally changes to a very different set, you know. And so that's like how the whole room comes together, like all kinds of different chords making a big like orchestral noise. Along the walls, the stripes of color drip down towards the floor. The key to this dripping process, according to Marcus, is quite simple. It's called gravity. You put the brush in the liquid, you do that. And if the brush is full of paint, paint starts to run down. It's like, that's like the most basic painting action in a way. And then I use that, multiplying that action over and over and over again to create whole rooms that are painted that way, you know. Marcus views color as language that sparks a dialogue between the viewer and the piece. He mixes dry pigments together to make his bright hues. What's your uh, favorite color? <laughs> I don't have one. You don't have one? <laughs> no. It'd be awfully hard all, to choose. All colors are our favorite colors, but I have one pigment. If I would not be able to have that pigment, it would be very hard to, to do the work that I'm doing. And that color is featured in this work. That's it, it in its pure form, you know. And that is just such a beautiful blue. So much of his art is interactive, from this movable wall to this brightly colored sphere. There is a lot more in here than color. You could look at this piece for hours and find something new every time. You open that kitchen drawer and all that stuff that's in there that you never use again, you know, that ends up basically here. I started to make these, these sculptures that have embedded objects and the, the objects are from little toy things to keys to stuff I find on the street. And when I started, I think about a story, you know, so there's like a dice, a key and some coins that could have been in somebody's pocket. Where did it came from with the dice? You know, so it's like, it's really like, you know, I give you some things to kind of create your own story or start to find the story that's maybe in there, you know. And there is definitely a story in here, one that honors Marcus's childhood. Look closely at this piece. Do you see the people underneath? Marcus used this childhood picture of himself and his siblings sitting on a beach to create this work. So this is like taken around 
after lunchtime and all the adults lying in the back. There's like four people taking a nap there in the back. And then the four kids in the foreground are playing cards. It's hard to decide, is it a photo, is it a painting, you know, and it's kind of both. And I like that kind of in-between state. It's the same thing with the sculptures that I do. Is it a painting or is it a sculpture? Or is it just three-dimensional paint? And where do you start to define, like, the sculpture versus a painting? And then I give it a clear coat so the colors pop up again. Despite his international success, Marcus does not rest on his laurels. His work is sold for tens of thousands of dollars, but Marcus is always striving to create something different, something better, always learning. That is like an insecurity that you should keep around all the time, you know, because it also makes you, or it makes me think about like how can I push my work to be better or more interesting or come up with a body of work that people haven't seen yet. Marcus feels welcomed by the Seacoast community, especially Portsmouth. Co-owner Michael Labrie says the museum complements the musical venue upstairs. Bringing the visual arts uh, to join the, the musical arts and, and the culinary arts and the architectural arts. And so uh, we're real, real pleased. As this first exhibition at Mona comes to a close and this amazingly painted room will come down, Marcus leaves here with some fond memories of New Hampshire. I love it, it's very sweet. I'd say, I said, um, I'm never going back to New York, you know? Like, people are so nice and like doors open for me, I'm the artist, everybody is like, yay, oh, you're the artist, awesome. I'm in New York, I'm nobody. <laughs> I don't, I'm never going back. <laughs>